What's that? Well, well, I thought I'd mention it because you're yeah. a big fan of New Zealand. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, right, going on to Vish's email. Hello, Vish. Hello, Ramblers. Uh, after Pete mentioned during the previous show that his hatred of Tim Cahill had mellowed slightly, it got me thinking about my friend's dad, who, by contrast, developed a hatred of a player from his own club that grew exponentially. The club in question is Blackburn Rovers. The player was cumbersome, sometimes dive bomber, Chef Kikuki. Oh, yeah. Is it Kikuki? Chef Kikuki. Yeah, Chef Kikuki. He played for Newcastle briefly for about five matches. He's a finished striker. Yeah, he's No, was he finished or was he? Right. He has a fascinating kind of... God, he, he looks like one of those blokes, for those who can't picture him, who's never been young. Yeah. yeah. It looks like his face has been carved out of granite. He did, yeah. no, or think... he was sort of just born in some sort of rock formation. He just yeah. sort of cracked out of it one day. Yeah, he, he escaped like a, a civil war, I do believe, in, right. in one country and sort okay. of managed to migrate. Um, my mate's dad, a proper football man, trademark, has been a Blackburn <laughs> fan since the 60s, experiencing the highs and lows with good grace. He once told me that he saw it as his duty as a supporter to encourage and he would never slate or berate his own players or manager while in the stands, uh, partly due to his doctor telling him that he developed <laughs> high blood pressure. Instead, he'd save the effing and blinding for the car ride home until the first year of Chef Kikuki. <laughs> After a host of woeful performances in his first season, my mate's dad was ticking, and eventually he lost his rag. During a rare display of competence, Kuki, after coming on as a substitute with Blackburn, desperate for a goal, managed to round the opposition keeper in front of the home end and had an easy finish on. Somehow he conspired to miss. He fell in a heap in front of my mate's dad, who was sat just in front. Struggling to keep it together, he stood up and pointed at Kuki, who looked right back at him and shouted, You wanker! <laughs> Kuki's face dropped as he watched this irate fan storm out with 20 minutes to go. On the drive home, he vowed he would never watch Kuki play in a Blackburn shirt again. A promise he kept superbly. In future matches, whenever Kuki came on as a sub, he would leave and listen to the rest of the game in the car, often, <laughs> often, oh offering, often offering a cursory, I'm sorry, lads, I just can't do it, to his three sons who attended the game with him. It got to the stage that whenever the fourth official's board went on Kuki's number, the rest of the row were conditioned to stand up to allow my mate's dad to leave. This culminated oh. in a rather spectacular moment when, having just walked through the turnstiles at 2.30pm, the ground announcer at Ewood Park in the news of a late change due to an injury sustained in the warm-up. My mate's dad bowed his head, turned around and walked straight back to his car. Oh, my <laughs> wow. goodness. Fantastic. Incredible. I mean, that's, that's how commitment. you hate a player like a pro. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You should be inspired I'm by embarrassed that. embarrassed by that. <laughs> so, vicious mate's dad, fantastic stuff. And, and finally for now, Tobias Lilia Blod. For you rummaging around the foreign cabinets is very much in your future pick dance. <laughs> well, the bins outside. <laughs> outside offices. Um, right. Hello to uh, James. We were talking about Dad's behaviour at football grounds last week. This ah, yeah. There, were, there was yeah. some beauty. I can there. see this being a bit of a trope as well. Yeah, I do like this. Um, I thought you might like to hear about my own father's behaviour. Normally a calm and... <laughs> Nothing good starts from that. <laughs> <laughs> Normally a calm and collected individual. I've only managed to get him to shout at me twice in 24 years. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. I'd love a bit of that in my house. It must be the exceptional son. <laughs> hey, uh, we had, me and my dad had a cracking argument this afternoon about uh, Dvorak, the creator of the keyboard, Dvorak, okay. uh, D- versus Dvorak, the pronunciation of the uh, uh, classical music man. Either way, a particularly uh, bad Portsmouth performance caused my dad to unleash 90 minutes of pent-up anger by shouting, oh, for fuck's sake, and kicking the empty plastic chair in front of him on the full-time whistle. He instantly became panicked and insisted we flee the grab before security took him in. <laughs> and the next week he called me to let me know that he called the club, insisting to the woman on the phone he'd tripped and his foot had fallen through it and then offered to pay for the seat. Oh, that oh, is That's sweet, isn't it? That is nice. Thank you, James, for that one. Uh, hello, Ramblers. Hope all is well. This is from uh, Sam. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the Chef Kikuki story on uh, last week's previous oh, yeah. show. So, that guy's name still doesn't seem right to me. No. Yeah. He's not even for Newcastle. It's, it's, it's pronounced in a different way than you'd expect. Yeah. That's yeah. the problem, yeah. I think, yeah. Kookie. Yeah. Uh, and it instantly reminded me of my favourite football anecdote of all time and another tale involving a grubby dad at the football. It comes from a column uh, that the ever excellent Harry Pearson wrote, uh, wrote for The Guardian in August 2007. Here it is in full. Uh, a friend of mine recalls an afternoon in the Bob End at Ayrson Park during which the bloke sitting in front of him aimed a torrent of abuse at a young Middlesbrough midfielder. The fact that the youngster had red hair was, particular, was a particular source of vexation to the man. At one point, he ended a fulminating diatribe by uh, roaring, Next time you show yourself in public, wear yourself a hat, you ginger twat. <laughs> Dear, my huh? friend had had enough. You can't call him that, he told the man. The man looked round, his face bore a look of vindictive triumph. I'll call him what I like, he snarled. I'm his father. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Sam from London. That's nice. uh, a wonderful bit of cribbing from the Guardian. <laughs> I want, I want a wonderful missive. <laughs> and it reminds me slightly of... Um, it was, a, it, was a, it was a local match, shall we say. Right. And uh, my mate was Like playing. local opinions. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> And uh, my mate was playing for this side. I think there was, was sort of semi-pro kind of level, and he played for the the other side before. So he was, uh, he right, was up okay. against his old team, and a few of us went along to watch him. 
And, of course, some of the fans were giving him a bit of stick, mm. just a bit of laugh and whatnot. And they were shouting away. And, uh, and there was a little group of us and a, and, and, and a chap who was stood right next to this fan. And, and they were giving him plenty. Yeah. And, the, and the old man stood up when one of them said, are oh, you effing bastard? And he went, many things he is, but a bastard he isn't. <laughs> as you know, I'm his father. <laughs> <laughs> he let so much go. Actually incorrect. They say at those type of events, you never know who you're standing near. You yeah, that's right. You've got to be careful. <laughs> Yeah. I also love many things he is. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of valid many criticism, but yeah. you know, his I've, parents are just sound. I've got a list myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you've covered most of it. Yeah. You, can't believe, you won't believe what he did when he was 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Back to the Premier League. Really if you're listening, is. don't do that. Mm. Yeah, stop it. Let's kick that out of football. <laughs> OK, so, hi, guys. I'm a Wolves fan, but my dad supports Blackpool. On my 18th birthday, they played each other. We went to watch. Me in the home end, my dad in the away end. After the boys in goal gave me a cracking birthday present, winning 4-0, unheard of under McCarthy, I left the ground and tried to ring my dad to arrange to meet up so we could get the train. He rejected every call and refused to talk to me. I saw him at the station and still his mood had not changed. He <laughs> sat away from me on the train and drove off from the station without me. So on my 18th birthday, I got ignored by my dad and left at the train station. <laughs> Needless to say, the mother was not happy with his actions and he was made to pick up me and my mates from town in the early hours of the next morning. All the best, Phil. <laughs> Shocking behaviour. <laughs> Terrible dad. <laughs> Terrible dad in. Really bad. Mike Phelan would not be doing that. Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. No. no. Mike, yeah, Mike Moreland Phelan would be... Uh, oh, yeah, he'd be gracious in defeat even, I would think. <laughs> right. Um, even, if he, even if he managed the other club. You know, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, dear. We've we got another dad one. It's quite long, but I think it's worth it. So here we go. Dads. Yeah, oh, I know. Dads. I know. They're letting, they're letting their have, sons down all over the place. We need a positive dad story at one Or, or a mum story as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you've got any mum stories, do let us know. Referencing your recurring theme of embarrassing dads at footy matches, I thought I'd recount one of the worst experiences of my life. Here we go. I love these ones. Yeah. <laughs> See, when people say to me, oh, what do you want when you talk about the emails and you complain? This. If you start an email off saying, this is the worst experience of my life, I'm all in. Absolutely. You haven't heard it yet. I'm Andrew Mar. <laughs> Interest peaked. <laughs> so, I was about seven years old and my dad had taken me to a midweek game to watch the mighty Chester City, now Chester FC. We were running a bit late and rushing to get in, but as my dad charged towards the turnstile, I noticed something was amiss. Dad, that's for away fans, I helpfully pointed out, only for him to explain, bah, doesn't really matter. Even at that tender age, I knew instinctively that it did, in fact, matter quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we sat quietly throughout the first half, then at half-time made our way to the refreshment kiosk. While queuing up, a bloke stood just in front of us, was ranting to anyone that had listened about the, way, the, about the away side shortcomings. I sensed something was about to happen and started moving slowly away from my dad, who has <laughs> never been brilliant under pressure. <laughs> Seven years old. Yeah. Imagine a seven-year-old <laughs> edging away from your dad because as a seven-year-old, yeah. you think you'll be safer away from your. No, but imagine a seven-year-old fully being across his dad's weaknesses. Yeah, your dad should be Superman when you're seven. Yeah, no, That's what yeah. I mean, yeah. not good under pressure. No. <laughs> I was right. The fella turned around and asked my dad directly what his opinion was on the matter. I held my breath. How would he play this out? Would he murmur quiet assent, shrug and play dumb? Nope. My dad answered with the immortal words, wouldn't know, mate, we're Chester fans, nodding towards me as he did so to ensure that if he was going down, <laughs> at least he'd be taking me with him. <laughs> this is the away end, he growled, to which my dad replied, as he had to me, with an unconcerned shrug, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Somehow this was enough to confuse the angry away fan man into silence. He turned around shaking his head and muttering under his breath to some of the other away fans. Needless to say, the rest of that time in the queue, not to mention the following 45 minutes of football, were quite uncomfortable. <laughs> Can't be sure, but I think we were playing Leighton Orient, whoever it was. They definitely played in red. Fairly sure we lost as well. That's from Joe Curitan Williams. Joe, I'm sorry that you had such a tra traumatic experience. That but, is, um, I mean, the headline for that emo should be, Dad considers using seven-year-old son as human shield. Yeah. <laughs> But I love that as if he's as if he's looking at his son and looking at the guy who's uh, you know in his, in his grill saying, "Oi, you mess with a ball, you get the horns, all right." Yeah. <laughs> Never been great under pressure. Oh, yeah. dear. That's <laughs> absolutely stunning. That is. Before we talk about uh, Crystal Palace, let's have some emails with Pete Donaldson. Yes, it's time for emails, guys. Oh, yeah. Straight back into the email hot seat. There are some beauts. Yeah. Who read them in my absence? You, and it was excellent. Uh, but he did yeah. a great job. I really job. enjoyed it, actually. Mm. Jim can actually talk, that's it's why. It's a step up. <laughs> uh, this is from Craig Nixon from Sean Moore. Oh, Nixie. 
Right, next show. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. On the subject of embarrassing dads at football, I want to share my story. My dad and brother are Sunderland supporters, but I rebelled and supported Newcastle, making me the black and white sheep of the family. This is how this one got in. <laughs> I, I was at, Jim actually sp- uh, chose these, so there we go. I was around 16 years old, and it was Derby Day. We decorated the house with Newcastle flags covering the back and Sunderland fla- flags on the front. I invited all of my Newcastle supporters. <laughs> Party time. <laughs> and no man's land in the toilet, sorry. Uh, I invited all of my Newcastle supporting mates around to watch the match, which we won 2-1. After the game, I was re- recreating the winning goal in the living room using a pair of rolled-up socks when I heard the patio door slide open abruptly. I was confronted by my dad, who had been drinking whiskey for most of the day, holding the hose pipe from the garden. He chased me and my mates around the house, spraying water everywhere until we escaped out of the front door. He soaked the house and knocked all the ornaments off the mantelpiece. <laughs> Can I just say? <laughs> Needless to say, my mother was not happy and he spent the rest of the day in the dog house. Is his dad, Kevin Keegan? Can I just say, that's, that's a lot more cheerful outcome than I hear usually when a dad drinks a lot of whiskey and grabs a hot yeah, pot. Quite. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Nixon from Ushomo, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I'm that, loving it. That's very good. Absolutely lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, evening, lads. Uh, this is, uh, things. Uh, this is from uh, Amy Pet- Petzolt. Uh, hello, Amy. Uh, dear Ramble Boy, Keeping with the parental stories, I thought I'd offer a mum story. My... Ah, the first one. Is, is this it? the first mum story? Yeah, it is. Wow, mum's the word. Uh, my dad is an American and has no less than and has less than no interest in our football. Luckily for me, as I played at primary school, my god- godfather got me a junior Gunners membership. One game, Arsenal versus Bradford, my godfather couldn't go, and so my godmother took us and invited my mum along. Now, I will admit that although I was young, I did notice the linesman had a rather sprightly spring in his step as he ran the line, and it turned out that my mum became quite taken with him. You know how annoying it is when you get t- caught next to someone who commentates on the game for the whole 90 minutes? Well, I promise you, it's much more annoying when that person isn't describing the name, but it's indeed the linesman's bum. Especially Aww. when that for person, 90 minutes. Especially when that person birthed you. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure this doesn't turn into all that, that's why we don't want women watching the game rubbish, I will also leave you with a couple of things my dad has said when I've watched the games with him around. Handball, it was a throwing. Why do they all keep <laughs> hugging each other? And why wasn't the goalie just running down the other end and throwing the ball in the net? <laughs> I've heard Pete ask two of those. <laughs> <laughs> and admire Lysman's arse. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. That was excellent. Thanks, uh, Amy. Uh, finally, for now, uh, we've got uh, some quick and so fast. You've already read one out. You should have warmed yourself up. I know. Yeah. Um, uh, hi, Ramble team. This is from uh, Karen K. Hello, Karen K. <clears throat> As we've heard a lot about embarrassing dads, I thought I'd share a few highlights of my mother's football behaviour over the years. Oh. Background. She's from South Africa, a huge Tottenham fan, mainly due to the fact that Arsenal toured South Africa in the early 60s and created a load of Arsenal fans. So being contrary... She she decided to support the rivals. <laughs> I like that. Uh, things that she has made me and my sister endure. Uh, she made a primary school age boy cry when she told him he couldn't come into my birthday party with an Arsenal shirt on. She did let him in, but I don't think she, he enjoyed the party. She pretend. <laughs> she pret- <laughs> She pretends to fall over on the tube and knock off Arsenal hats. What? That's incredible. She, she has stood at the top of the stairs at Wembley and accidentally tripped up opposing fans. They all stumbled, and when turning around and seeing this five-foot woman, all apologised to her. That is that amazing. That case is perilous. <laughs> I know. It's about, it's about 50 steps, Wembley. If it was the escalator as well, they just keep on falling. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Uh, she delights in buying new underwear when we go to away games and then picks the youngest-looking steward to search her bags to see how embarrassed she can make him. Oh, my goodness. And this, uh, she's... This is, she's this is top Draw. She saved up to travel around Europe and left two weeks earlier than planned to try and get a ticket to see Spurs play Feyenoord in the Netherlands in 74. She got a ticket, but the whole stand was kicked out after 15 minutes due to rioting. She swears she had nothing to do with it. <laughs> ah, a likely ah. story. Yeah. yeah. Well, overall, that's... overall, she's a very cool footballing mother. She never swears or anything, uh, but she does something to say things like, you stupid man, at the referee. She, <laughs> she regularly assaults people. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was about yeah, to say, she she she's, she's had a season she's... ticket for 20 years. She can swear it off. I'm not worried about that. No. Wow. <laughs> Stop um, assaulting <laughs> I'm like, detecting the theme here. We've started talking about this for a while now. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. the mums are always worse than the dads. Yeah. <laughs> the, dads the dads are quite bad, but in like a really sort of dad rub- way, rubbish way. Dad way. That's genuinely sinister. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, Peter? Uh, my highlighter. Uh, can we do a